أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين وأوصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد We begin by praising Allah and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger we ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him all of the prophets and messengers that came before him his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in their blessed path until the day of judgment and we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, this Monday is literally the best day of the year. A time that if Allah gives us the ability to see it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live to see it and allow us to be accepted on that day, may never come back to us. And it's a day that the Prophet ﷺ described as خَيْرُ يَوْمٍ طَلَعَتْ فِيهِ الشَّمْسُ يَوْمَ عرفة. The best day that the sun has risen upon is the day of Arafah. The day that you come to know your Lord every single year. The Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرُ الدُّعَاءُ دُعَاءُ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةً That the best supplication is the supplication on that day of Arafah. وَخَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَا وَنَبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِي And the best of what I and the Prophets before me have said, meaning all of the Prophets were guided to this day. They said on that day, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. There is only one God. وحده لا شريك له. Alone with no partners. له الملك وله الحمد. To him belongs all praise. To him belongs all blessings. وهو على كل شيء قدير. And to him belongs power over all things. This is what all of the prophets would say on this day. The day that marks يوم أشهدهم على أنفسهم ألست بربكم قالوا بلا شهدنا The day that marks the moment that we all stood in front of Allah. And just as you look around and you see all of these people spread out today, all of us stood before Allah on that day. And it was upon us that an oath was taken. Allah asked each and every single one of us, am I not your Lord? And all of us say, Bala shahidna, yes, we bear witness. We bear witness. The dua or that oath that the Prophet ﷺ mentions that Allah refers to in the Quran when he says, shahidin wa mashhud. The Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic narration that al yawm al maw'ud, the promised day is the day of judgment. The shahid, the witness, is Sayyidul Ayyam, Yawm Al Jumu'ah, the best of all days of the week, which is the day of Friday. And Mashhud, the day of the witnessed, is the day of Arafah, where Allah calls the angels and says, Look at all of these people around the world calling upon me, invoking me in their languages, coming to the place of Arafah, which we'll talk about in a moment, covered in dust, exhausted, their sleep schedules off, each one of them with their own unique du'as, each one of them with their own hopes, calling upon one God. The day that the angels witness that Allah has forgiven all of us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that are forgiven. Allahumma ameen. The day that represents one of the five pillars of Islam, this is very interesting, that of the five pillars of Islam, the first pillar, which we will witness today insha'Allah ta'ala, is when someone testifies to the oneness of God for the very first time. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. One pillar of Islam fulfilled by one statement, one testimony, in which you turn the page with your Lord. 
Everything that has been done before is forgotten. You come back to your origin and enter into that fitrah. That's the first pillar of Islam. And the last pillar of Islam is Hajj, where you go back to your Lord in an enactment of death, wearing the clothes of death, once again testifying, La ilaha illallah, labbayk Allahumma labbayk, here I am, O oh Allah, responding to your call affirming your oneness, uncorrupted and undistracted by everything that the world has thrown at me, recognizing my purpose in life is to worship you. But Hajj Arafah, and Hajj is Arafah. That moment where once again you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying throughout the day, La ilaha illallah, you are only one. And I'm coming to you fully acknowledging that on my terms, responding to you, O oh Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us that throughout the day of Arafah, the best thing that you can do is renew that covenant over and over and over again. Before you think about your dua wish list, before you think about all the things you want to ask your Lord, throughout the day, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Alastu bi rabbikum bala, you are my Lord, wahdahu la sharika la, continuously renewing your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. And the word Arafah means to come to know. To come to know who? To come to know your Lord. وَمَنْ عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ And if you know your Lord, then you know yourself. وَمَنْ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ And if you know yourself, اِعْتَرَفَ بِذَنْبِهِ وَنَقْصِهِ مَعَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Then once you know your Lord and then you know yourself, then you will naturally know your own shortcomings in regards to your Lord. The blessings that He has bestowed upon you are a prerequisite to you understanding the deficiency with which you have responded, which then leads you to the most sincere version of your supplication. Realize that the dua that we say throughout that day does not just have an acknowledgement of Allah's oneness, but a praise for all of the blessings that He showers upon us throughout the year. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us, Sayyidul Istighfar, the chief of seeking forgiveness. Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma stata'atu, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi, faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. O Allah, you are my Lord, you created me, and I am your slave. And I am upon the promise, the oath, the covenant that I have taken with you. I will perform to the best of my ability. I seek refuge in you from what I have done. And I admit to you all of your ni'am, all of the blessings that you have descended upon me, wa abu'u bi dhanbi. And how I have responded in a way in which shortcoming is inevitable due to the magnificence of you and the blessings that you have descended upon me. And subhanAllah, throughout the day on the day of Arafah, you are acknowledging that as well, because you can't know your own deficiency unless you acknowledge His blessings upon you. The same way that you can't know that you are His slave if you don't acknowledge Him as your master. The same way that you can't negate all of the other gods unless you acknowledge and affirm the oneness of God, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may His peace and blessings be upon all of His prophets. You cannot do one without the other. And look at the similarity of those du'as as they come together. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times, when you think of Arafah, you think of a place. You think of the place of Arafah. Arafah is so much more spectacular when you're actually there in the makan, in the place, and you see the pilgrims covered in dust. You can envision what the hadith is telling you about the humility of the people that are coming before their Lord, leaving everything behind, acknowledging His oneness, sleep deprived, but hopeful in His mercy. You can see it when you're there in Arafah. But as Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Arafah is makan and zaman. It's a place and a time. وَمَنْ وَقَفَ فِي عَرَفَةً جَمَعَ فَضْلِ الْمَكَانِ وَالزَّمَانِ And if a person is blessed to stand in the place of Arafah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all another opportunity to stand in Arafah, then he combines or she combines the blessing of the time and the place. But you have to remember that the ibadah of Arafah, the worship of Arafah for the Prophet for seven years before Hajj was fasting. 
It was fasting the day of Arafah and Medina. Longing for the opportunity to stand in Arafah just like we long for it. It was a remarkable day, a special day to the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims every single year without Hajj. And we have to renew that in our hearts that this is the best day of the year. You know, you think about what you would do. Sometimes it just takes our own drive to then dictate the way that we achieve our goals. You think about what you would do if you had the most important day of your life, right? Which we'll just say, for the sake of it, your wedding. The day that you have a child or your spouse gives birth to a child, the day of your child's graduation. That day is a momentous day on that year's calendar. You're looking forward to it. You are longing for it. And as Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala points out, how amazing is it that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan, we don't know which of the last 10 nights is the last 10 nights. So the best night of the year is concealed. So we strive for all 10 nights, right? But we know exactly when Arafah is. We know exactly when Arafah is. We know the day. We know the time. We can plan for it. We have no doubt that this is the best day of the year. We have no doubt that everything the Prophet ﷺ said is happening, is happening in those moments where Allah is boasting to the angels and forgiving His creation. As, as Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala said, Al-Itq min al-Nar. Al-Itq min al-Nar. The prize of being forgiven on that day. Amali jami'i al-Muslimin. That is for everyone that is observing the zaman of that day the time of that day. That is not just for the people standing in the makan, in the place of Arafah. The forgiveness from Allah that comes on that day covers everyone that is renewing that covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. So what do we do on that day? Well, first and foremost, the intention. Comes back to the intention. From now, Ya Allah, I'm going to worship you on that day. Ya Allah, I'm going to fast that day. And you know what? If you can't fast for any reason, the Prophet ﷺ assured you that the reward is there anyway because you had the intention and if you were prohibited by means or by circumstances that are out of your hands, then Allah has written down for you the full reward. So I'm going to fast that day. I'm going to observe that day. I'm going to look forward to that day. Everything before that day, as I plan for that day, is ibadah, is an act of worship. You know, when Mu'adh ibn Jabal rahimahullah ta'ala radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, inni la ahtasibu nawmati kama ahtasibu qawmati, that I seek the reward for my sleep the same way I seek the reward for being awake. Why? Because I sleep so that I can be more energetic in the worship of Allah and in the performance of charity and all good deeds, in the service of Allah and His creation. The sleep is with the intention of energizing myself. So you know what? You're sleeping early on Sunday nights is a form of ibadah. It's an act of worship. Go to sleep early on Sunday night. Get yourself ready on Sunday night. The suhoor that you wake up for, the Prophet said the angels send their prayers upon the people as they're doing the suhoor. Start off your day with the suhoor on that day. And subhanAllah, if you think about hajj, because there is a parallel, yawm al the day before Arafah, the Prophet ﷺ would take the Sahaba to Mina and what would they do? Nothing. Rest. Rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to nourish myself. That in and of itself is part of the worship of the day of Arafah. I'm going to think about my du'as on that day. I'm going to prepare with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you're renewing your covenant with Allah, so here's a challenge for you. One major change that you're going to make in life on the best day of the year, it's worth it. What are you signing the contract with this Monday? What's the change you're making this Monday? And if you can't think of a change, we have a bigger problem. What's the change you're making on Monday? What are you signing that contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that covenant that you are renewing on Monday? It's a day of covenant, not just a day of supplication. A day that brings us back to, Ya Allah, I am going to live my life the way that you have commanded me to live my life in hopes for what you have promised me in the next. What's the covenant? What's the contract that you're signing on Monday as you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Starting off the day with Fajr in Jama'ah, in congregation. This masjid better be as full on Monday at Fajr as it is right now for Jumu'ah. And to make it easy for you, we'll have a halaqa after Fajr talking about the virtues of La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu mulku wa lahu alhamd wa ala kulli shayin qadir. So that when you repeat it throughout the day, you'll remember it. And you stay till sunrise, you have Hajj written down for you on the day of Arafah. So make sure you're here 
on Monday morning, insha'Allah ta'ala. If you're in the community, live stream is not allowed for you. Find a way to cut it off for Dallas. You need to be here. The Mala'ika, the Hajj is here, insha'Allah ta'ala. You start off your day with Fajr in Jama'ah. Start off your day with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start off your day with the two rak'ahs of duha, sunrise, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then spend the day in dua and be certain in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijabah. Call upon your Lord while you are certain in the answer. Don't say, Allahumma khfirli in shi't, as the Prophet said, say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you want to, or if you will. No. Call upon Allah with complete certainty in His answer on that day. The Prophet spent that whole day in dua. If you can't think of what you're going to say for the hours of that day, start getting your list together. But let the top of that list be what? The dhikr that the Prophet taught us, and then Forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest thing that you could ask from Him on that day. And then what's your contract? SubhanAllah, I want you to think about this. All the du'as, all the ahadith about du'a being accepted from Allah, all the verses in the Qur'an, قَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servant asks about me, then I am close. All of that, how much is it multiplied by on the best day of the year when the dua is more accepted on that day than any other time of the year? How close are you to Allah on that day when you make your dua? And yes, certainty in Allah's mercy is not complacency with your own sinfulness. What are you signing the contract with? What's the change you're making on Monday? And I want to end insha'Allah ta'ala with this beautiful athar, this beautiful narration. Which, subhanAllah, I want you to put yourself in the scene, the makan of Arafah. May Allah take us back to the place of Arafah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great scholar, great ascetic, great sage, he saw Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, who he gave several khutbahs about this scholar and sage and teacher of sincerity. He said, I came up to Sufyan al-Thawri on the day of Arafah, wa huwa jathan ala rukbatayhi. The scene, by the way, he was on his knees and it was towards the end of the day of Arafah and he was on his knees crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His eyes were flowing with tears, his hands were raised, his knees were on the ground. This is Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, the school of sincerity, the teacher of how to be an ascetic. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah, he sees him and Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to alternate one year in Hajj, one year he'd go out in battle. SubhanAllah, always fi sabilillah. He said, I walked up to him on that day of Arafah. And I said to him, O Sufyan, as the sun was about to set on the day of Arafah, Man aswa'a hadha al-jam'i hala. Who is the worst person or who is in the worst state amongst all of those that are amongst us today? Aswa'a hadha al-jam'i hala. The worst person in this gathering on this day as the mercy of Allah is descending. And he responds, The person who thinks that Allah will not forgive him. That's the worst person on the day of Arafah, is the person that thinks that Allah will not forgive them. SubhanAllah, the mercy of Allah is that the makan of Arafah, the place of Arafah, if a person showed up right before the 10th day, then they are counted amongst those that observed Arafah. What then of the person who spends their entire day on the zaman, on the time period of Arafah, making dua? Schedule it from now. Place your duas there from now. Start the day right. End the day right. End the day right, because the best part of Arafah, by the way, is the time between Asr and Maghrib, the last hour of Arafah. Just like if you were there in Arafah and the sun is setting and you're trying to catch those last du'as that you suddenly remembered as the sun is setting, the day of Arafah is special, especially in its last moments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to observe it and count us amongst the forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be sincere in our du'a and our supplications and answered in everything that we come to Him with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings on that day and always. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum risa'ir wa muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu al ghafur rahim.
Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma khfir li mu'minin wa mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat innaka sami'un qaribun mujibu da'wat. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزيد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة